I've definitely thought about quitting multiple times. And I'm scared if I'll be able to reach Canada before my term starts. Since the course began, I haven't been to my university. They can't just take another vaccine. Uh, it, it's it's way too risky. After 18 months of the COVID-19 pandemic, students around the world are facing yet another year impacted by the coronavirus. From vaccination rules to travel bans, it's never been harder for millions of international students. India exports over 575,000 students overseas each year, according to the Institute of International Education. But many Indian students have faced difficulties reaching their colleges overseas. I, as a student, I'm scared if I'll be able to reach Canada before my term starts uh, um, and uh, if I'll be able to reach there before my uh, quarantine because I've uh, booked hotels and uh, they're quite expensive and they don't change it without a fees. Uh, students have to uh, live in fear until their very day of travel. Across Europe, many countries now require COVID passports to enter restaurants, bars and even some public transport. The students vaccinated overseas with shots not yet recognised in Europe, such as India's co-vaccine, they are in limbo, as they face a choice of getting re-vaccinated with a new vaccine, something not recommended by healthcare professionals, or further restrictions on their lives. People are saying that I can get Pfizer if I do not have uh, sufficient antibodies, but it, I think it's risky, I cannot do this with my body, I can't just take another vaccine, uh, it, it's, it's way too risky according to me. We do not know what impact it will have in the long run on our bodies. Tipakshi is still waiting to see if the situation in France changes before booking her flight to school and may even defer her course if the situation doesn't become easier. When, I'm, when you're learning a language especially, uh, I would like to learn it in the country in which it is spoken, speak to native uh, you know, native people and interact with people there. And that is what my main purpose is to improve my language skills. Jatul Zala recently arrived in the UK. So we need to uh, step out uh, of Heathrow, quarantine in hotel and then finish it and then travel to Scotland. She and her friends together paid £2,400 to share a room for 10 nights in hotel quarantine and had to begin studying during her stay despite poor internet connection. Since the course began, I haven't been to my university. So I haven't seen my campus, I haven't seen how my college looks, how my uni looks. Countries like New Zealand, Japan and China have fully closed their borders, even to international students, forcing them to continue their studies from their home countries. Classes in China start at 8 a.m. and that for me is 1 a.m. So that's usually when the time period where I have my classes is from 1 a.m. to about 11 a.m. or noon in Morocco. So the way it has majorly affected me is mainly physically because of my sleep schedule. It's flipped, definitely thought about quitting multiple times, especially on those nights where it just gets really stressful and it just feels like it's all bottling up. Overseas students bring over 20 billion pounds to the UK economy each year through paying for accommodation, fees, and buying from local shops. Universities and local economies have struggled from their absence during the pandemic. The students have very strong consumer power here. Uh, the universities want to recruit them, and let's be blunt about it, they want their fees. So, you know, students should not be scared of ringing up universities and having these conversations with them. They are, to a certain degree, customers of that university. 